All right, welcome back, guys, to another episode of our Not So Late Night Show. And since we are slowly going into a month where we are slowly preparing for our next thematic sharing, which is all regarding e-commerce, uh, we plan to actually talk about one uh, special player or company that might have a bit of uh, exposure in the e-commerce scene uh, and then go a little bit into their business model and then try to understand whether this company have prospects or not uh, when we are slowly transcending into a world where our spending and buying habits are slowly changing to become a more online kind of spending behavior. So the company that we will be talking about today will be GHL Systems perhaps, so a company that I think mo most Malaysians are quite familiar of. Uh, they are a company that is in charge of uh, uh, endpoint terminal and also a little bit uh, exposure and prospects as well when it comes to online payment, right? So I think we just go straight into uh, the company, the business information and also the latest financial information and then uh, we round it up on whether uh, there could be any potential uh, that this company would have if it slowly uh, change our uh, spending habits. So let's go to it. So of course, a uh, quick disclaimer, the company that we're going to talk about today, uh, please do your due diligence and further analysis. Uh, this is by no way uh, an advice to you to buy, sell or take a position on uh, the shares or companies that we might be uh, divulging in this sharing session. So not only EGHL systems, but also the companies that uh, you might bring out to at least uh, make a comparison or, or make an argument case about it. So without further ado, I'll pass it to Chumbeng. What is this company all about in terms of the business model? Yeah, I think just give a brief introduction about the company. Uh, basically, it got founded in, back in 1994 uh, with a headquarter in Malaysia and then expanded their business to a multiple country. So you can see uh, they having their presence in Thailand, Philippines, Singapore, Indonesia, and also Australia. Now, of course, uh, GSL is always been uh, linked to payment-related services. So you can see this basically summarized all the offer they are giving uh, at the moment. So uh, they allow uh, the SME to accept payment from card, e-wallets, uh, and so on. Uh, other than processing payment, uh, they also allow uh, multiple uh, party to offer their billing services for the public to actually make payment, right? So everything about payment. Then this is basically, uh, I want to take you one step further on uh, their so-called core business. Uh, which is offering the terminals for the SME to accept card or e-wallet payment uh, inside their stores. So this is uh, a summary of their current status. So uh, they have a lot of footprints. Uh, uh, if you talk about uh, the terminal itself, so you got about 240,000 uh, footprints. And then uh, all in all, they got multiple, multiple uh, payment schemes that allow SME uh, with an ease in mind. Basically, with this terminal, they can just process everything cashless, right? So, uh, before we go into the details, maybe this is one of the uh, high-level flow for to understand what this business is all about. So, every time when you go into a shop and then you present a card for payment, actually behind the scene, it goes through multiple routes. And this multiple route uh, is the place where company like GSL uh, able to squeeze uh, some of the margin uh, through the transaction. So you can see, uh, if you start from the left, customer present the cards uh, to the merchant, and then bid it, it use the pin uh, numbers or wave to pay. It will actually go through the EDC terminals and then you relay the information to the acquiring bank, meaning the main bank behind these uh, terminals. And then when this acquiring bank uh, uh, receives the instruction, it will go through the payment uh, cards schemes or the payment net network so that he can actually contact the issue issuing bank. So for example, uh, if you're trying to pay using a Maybank credit cards uh, in a, let's say, Family Mart, and then this Family Mart is using a terminals that are uh, having a um, public bank as an acquiring bank. So the flow of uh, transaction will uh, it go through public bank and then public bank receives this instruction. It will actually try to talk to Maybank A. I need to actually uh, do a deduction of 50 bucks from uh, this credit card which is owned by you. Is it okay? So when the system and system uh, talk to each other, uh, they authorize and then this thing will come back. So you can follow the yellow 
dotted line and then it will go all the way back cascade back to the terminals and then the cashier will be able to see the uh, success transaction uh, status and after that of course payment completed the customer can uh, get away uh, walk away uh, with the goods that they have purchased so this pretty much sum up because all this involves multiple party and lot, a lot of processing uh, that happen in between this is where uh, the merchant will be bearing some of the cost so when you wave the card usually you won't feel it i i paid with 50 bucks my account got deducted with 50 bucks but behind the scene uh, for example if the sharing is actually uh, two, uh, let's say one percent uh, or two percent it will be 50 cent or one ringgit and then this one ringgit part of it will go to ghl so this is pretty much sum up uh, how all these party link to each other and where ghl is playing their part which is mainly in the edc terminals or the payment gateway parts right so uh of course to be a provider that can actually convince a lot of sme to join them they need to have a lot of coverage so this pretty much sum up uh all their payment schemes or e-wallet they are able to support across multiple regions they are in right now so uh beside physical terminals they also have the online payment gateway meaning you can pay uh, for example do when you do online shopping you can just uh, type in your card number and straight away can transact so this is all the list of uh payment provider they have connected to and of course uh, behind the scene we, you got the acquiring bank and so on and then you can see multiple banks is actually their partner uh, in different different regions so uh this is a snapshot on what uh, what I meant when we talk about uh, processing payment online. So this is the online uh, transaction part where they typically call it as eGHL. So uh, if you are running a business on your own and then you wanted to be able to accept payment inside your website, uh, one of the options you can go uh, in Malaysia is actually eGHL. But of course, maybe you will be familiar with IP88 uh, and so on. So this is the payment gateway part, which is processing uh, all the payment in the online world and of course uh, beyond this uh, processing payment uh, uh, that coming from the merchant meaning I walk into family mart and then I transact uh, they also able to uh, hook up to a lot of uh, bills providers uh, uh, to enable the merchant to collect the payment or enable the customer to make uh, payment to their bills so when you talk about bills, you can be making payments uh, to your electricity, uh, water bills, your astro bills. And some of the guys, if you are living in Clang Valley, you might see this purple color logo, uh, quite familiar. Uh, basically, they actually hook up with a lot of local council in Selangor states where you are able to pay some of the tax assessments uh, or even some of the uh, summon or whatnot in the uh, state level. So this is also one of the way that GHL are able to make money from. Besides just processing payment, they are also hooked up to all this billing. And of course, when you pay, this billing uh, provider will share some of the margin back to GHL. And beyond uh, all this payment, they also put their step into a few places uh, because uh, the key uh, the key pillar they are having right now is a lot of SME. So when you have access to a lot of SME, uh, they might have multiple needs beyond just payment. Maybe they will need some financing or need to pay uh, for some micro insurance, let's say for the employee or some of the uh, other stuff. And this is some of the so-called uh, under the grow uh, uh, pillar G under GHL for them to actually make additional money uh, out of their current customer base and then uh, you can see they are trying to expand all the services including micro wealth which is uh, supposed to come in uh, very very soon so uh, the previous slide basically uh, summarized what is the business they are offering to uh, all the SME uh, one of the key notes that you should uh, take note I mean, one of the key things that you should take note is GHL is inside this kind of business where uh, it's always on recurring basis. 
So when we talk about annuity means this guy uh, paying every single year. And you can see it's about 87% 87, uh, 87 of their revenue coming from recurring, meaning the same guy paying the, the, the same service every single year. So this is a, a very predictable uh, business. When you hook the guy in, uh, basically it will follow you uh, in the next, uh, upcoming years. And then uh, you can pretty much predict the same amount of money can come back to you, 87% of it. So this is one of the key things about their business model, very predictable. And uh, after you know all this from a layman perspective on how they actually make their money from, uh, when you actually look into their uh, annual reports or quarter reports, you might be confused because they, they typically group their business pillar into these three uh, key parts, uh, which they typically call as TPA, uh, or in definition, it's actually transaction payment acquisition, where uh, is the margin they are able to make when uh, the user make payment through cards, through mobile payments, or when they reload uh, their mobile phones, making uh, payment for bills. So this is all the margin fall under the TPA parts. So the next one is also one of the core pillar. Uh, they call it as a shared services. Uh, basically, they are offering the sales or rental or even maintenance of the terminals to the SME. And lastly, they also have some uh, very specific solution services where uh, they help the SME to actually expand their business through some of the platform. For example, uh, allow the, their customer to offer loyalty uh, program to uh, all their clients or allow them to actually uh, make loan repayments. So this is the very uh, small part of it uh, where they're also trying very hard to actually grow since they already have the access to all the SME base. And of course, uh, I won't go into details. This is like the graphical uh, information on how different parties interact uh, with each other. So you, of course, uh, have the bank and also the merchant uh, that collect payment using the brick and mortar way, which is the terminus. And of course, the people that is actually uh, trans uh, interacting with it is all the customers. And then this pretty much sum up uh, where I already uh, already covered, which is the shared services, the rental of the terminal and so on, and going to the solution services where when the, the customer swipe, maybe they are entitled for some loyalty point or whatnot. And the third one is a TPA, make payment, and then part of the margin will go back to GHL. So this is some of the uh, number that uh, you can actually uh, take a look. So if you look into it, uh, basically, the number has been growing beside 2020, uh, impacted by pandemic, but GHL uh, is okay because some of the business pillar actually coming from online, which is the eGHL payment gateway they have shared uh, just now. Uh, and then you can see majority of their margin or their profit or their revenue coming from the TPA part. Uh, followed by the shared services, which is the rental of the EDC terminals and so on. And then lastly, is all the ad hoc solution like loyalty program are uh, offered by GHL. Uh, so this pretty much sum up uh, what this company is all about. Uh, for me, it's quite straightforward. If you are someone uh, inside this industry, uh, if you are not someone from the industry, also quite easy to understand because you're the one using it. You basically take out the card and then swipe. Someone must be making money out of it. Uh, not only the bank, GHL is part of it. And of course, if you don't usually go out for uh, retail spending due to pandemic, when you make payment to some of the website, uh, uh, you may come across eGHL. So this is some of the way that actually uh, GHL take money from you. But of course, uh, I will pass the stage to Jupan, uh, so that she, he can cover some of the uh, number in details. All right, thank you, Chun Bing. So, of course, uh, even though um, pandemic has been ravaging and, of course, the tendency and frequency of us going out to spend uh, offline or brick and mortar store uh, might decrease, but you can see that from the numbers itself, just, uh, just a brief glimpse of it, uh, nothing too bad happened to GHL. So, we'll take a deeper look uh, what happened in fiscal year 2020 and now since it's already uh, almost half 
uh, of 2021 is all gone and um, they have also released their Q2 uh, 2021 results. We will also take a deeper look at what the company has recovered from, if there is any, and uh, what are the so-called uh, further prospects that can help us make uh, so-called investment judgment if this company has the potential to still continue growing, right? So let's go through the financial info. Of course, before that, we will also go through some of the uh, so for information that I have been sharing with you guys just now. So of course, we are also going through our so-called preparation for our up and coming e-commerce uh, thematic transcript talk. So we'll talk more in detail on the companies that are involved in e-commerce. So for our existing premium club members, they are going to attend this event for free. And because they have already subscribed uh, for just 488 uh, club membership for just a year. So inside this club membership, we also have a Facebook private group where we discuss more and uh, uh, share more reading materials on uh, investment companies. And also there's also a monthly private sharing session on interesting topics and companies. There's also premium articles where club members are available to view and read it only. And of course, the last but not least is the thematic events and sharing that we just talked about. So of course, here is just a glimpse and examples of what we did uh, latest. So uh, the latest private video was uh, sharing with our members how to identify multi-bagger stocks, stocks that can go up in price in 100%, 200%, 300%, and so on. So what are the characteristics to find multi-bagger stocks? Uh, we have actually covered such topics. And of course, uh, in the preparation for e-commerce companies, uh, most of us are of probably one of the key users of uh, Shopee. And Shopee is also one of the so-called brainchild uh, products and services of C Limited, uh, a Singaporean company listed in the US stock exchange. So we went through the uh, quarter two reports and then uh, gave our uh, thoughts and analysis why even though uh, it's increasing in the loss, but still worthy uh, to look deeper into and why the justification. So this is the premium article. And also for those who are into dividend investing, we also have a a uh, private uh, exclusive report uh, on how Axis Suite actually passes through our uh, dividend hurdles or not. And of course, here is it. Uh, we have covered e-commerce. Uh, we will be covering e-commerce in end of uh, September, but previously we have already covered electric vehicles and also semiconductor. Yeah, if these two companies, these two uh, themes are something that you want to delve deeper, uh, being a member, you can actually stream back uh, these two uh, finish uh, thematic sharings and also get prepared for our upcoming one, which is e-commerce. So of course, just a brief uh, glance through of the entire uh, e-commerce chain. We will be covering C Limited, Amazon, uh, Shopify, Alibaba. Uh, you can see GHL there because we will touch more in detail of what we are sharing today. Uh, of course, the key one would be a uh, comparison with uh, another local company, which is very new for Hype. Of course, there's also uh, our Visa and also Square, which these are payment companies that are uh, listed in the US stock exchange. And not to forget the logistic warehouse and also our delivery partners. Okay, looking back to the annual results and uh, achievements by GHL, you can see that in the year of 2020, uh, things start to maybe uh, flatten in terms of the revenue, uh, of course, due to less uh, so-called physical footfall at the malls, at the shops, uh, you can see that uh, revenue did not grow as for the previous uh, years where it has been slowly achieving some sort of a growth uh, momentum. So uh, it came short, but hopefully in terms of Q2, we can see that uh, there is a so-called potential recovery, even though uh, the first uh, half of Malaysia uh, in 2021, we are still also quite impacted by uh, lockdown, right? But the numbers actually show that uh, if this continues to improve, uh, GHL might be actually uh, reporting a higher kind of revenue uh, versus what they did in 2020. Of course, uh, in terms of profit as well, uh, it came down in 2020. Uh, we all know that it is due to the pandemic, but come in first half of uh, 2021, there is some sort of recovery. Uh, you can actually uh, notice because the profit margin actually swing back up already. Of course, if you look much deeper into the uh, geographical markets, you can see that uh, over the past few years, uh, key countries or key regions like Malaysia, uh, Philippines, Thailand have also been uh, showing some sort of growth. Of course, 2020, most of the regions 
uh, got impacted as well. And of course, in 2021 Q2, we can see there's also some kind of uh, effects and also uh, so-called uh, after effects uh, in some of the countries and some of the regions that still are trying to recover from uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So you can see that in terms of the percentage as well, uh, overall it's still down and there is still some countries and regions still badly affected or still trying to recover rather than already recovered uh, from the uh, pandemic effects. Of course, you can see in terms of the business segments, that's what Juming said just now, uh, the key revenue generators are still going to be the TPA and also the shared services. Uh, even though uh, you can see, even though two quarter, uh, Q2 of 2019 was one of the so-called uh, most challenging quarters, but you compare it against the current second quarter of 2021, things have showed a little bit and promising kind of uh, improvement and recovery already, just that it haven't reached back the pre-pandemic levels. So one of the key uh, so-called criteria or, or, or KPI that we have to actually look deeper uh, when it comes to the TPA, it's actually the TPA vo TPV volume. So this is the so-called transactional uh, payment value. So in terms of how much GHL is processing every time a customer swipe their cards or their big cards uh, at the terminal. So if that actually increase, it means that in terms of the market share of the terminals processing the payment is actually showing some sort of growth, then this would actually help to give an indication that future TPA volumes and values might also uh, have a little bit of chance to grow. And as we all know, uh, if economy continues to recover, uh, if uh, footfall traffic continues to recover to physical malls and physical shops, this could have actually some sort of catalyst uh, to see further improvement in terms of the TPV and also the TPA as well. And another aspect to look at, which what, what determines the TPA performance would be the uh, gross profit and also the uh, merchant discount rate. So this is typically how much the merchant has to pay to companies like GHL or licensing their service to process debit and credit cards. So they'll give you a trend. Usually uh, the company is quite generous in terms of providing such information. You can see that even though uh, starting in the year of first quarter of 2017, even though the merchant discount rate was a bit high, but as more and more so-called uh, service providers come to the market, uh, it has become a little bit more challenging and competition is a bit more stiff. So uh, the rate has actually came not quite a bit, but you can actually be uh, more uh, relaxed that it has actually uh, stapled out a bit, right? So it's still uh, not GHL personally as a sole company in this kind of uh, situation. Uh, there are also other uh, competitions out there and they have to stay competitive so that they can continue to grow their market share. Of course, this is just uh, one of the so-called deep dive we will go into, we will talk more about the TPA, uh, the other contributing revenues, we will cover more in detail in our uh, thematic sharings on key commerce. So just briefly going through the uh, transaction value process, you can see there is a growth, but in terms of the gross revenue, uh, dividing it by the transaction value, you can see a drop as they also mentioned that in terms of the so-called merchant discount rate and also the so-called merchant mix as, uh, as a totality, there is some correction and hence uh, that actually came down from a percentage point of view. Of course, if you look at the uh, electronic payments as well, uh, everything seems to be going quite well as well. Uh, they recovered around 50% uh, from second, second quarter of 2020 to second quarter of 2021. And in terms of the gross revenue, uh, it also recovered significantly well at 77%. So this is one of the so-called key improvements or key recoveries that we have actually noticed uh, from GHL electronic payment uh, quarter on quarter kind of comparison. And of course, going through the uh, balance sheet, you can see that this is a company that uh, is quite good in terms of the business model in uh, generating profit and cash. Hence, you can see that in terms of total asset, it has been actually growing significantly in terms of liabilities, it's relatively flat, right? And the debt also is also quite marginally, uh, relatively uh, well uh, managed, just that on quarter two of 2021, it actually jumped up close to 100% from 31 million to 75 million. We'll talk about more later. 
uh, on that. And But you can see that the total equity part, which uh, a lot of it comes from the retained profits, it has also been on a steady increase. So this is a company that can actually earn profits from this business model and then use these profits to either uh, uh, grow its business by doing uh, merger and acquisitions or doing uh, KPEX also. Right. In terms of cash and cash equivalents has been quite uh, stable in terms of uh, how much cash they have. It has been on an increasing trend as well. Of course, looking at the cash flow, operating, investing and financial activities, you can notice that uh, one key uh, noticeable uh, trend would be what happened in 2018. So there is a huge outflow of cash. So that was the year where uh, GHL actually uh, went on a purchasing spree. They bought 51% of uh, SpeedPay uh, PLC, which is a, a Cambodian uh, online payment company, and also uh, bought into PACES uh, Malaysia Senior Bahad, uh, which is also an online payment company in Malaysia. So these two make up the bulk of their uh, acquisition for the year of 2018. Slowly after that, I think in the year 2019 and 2020, there weren't many uh, huge notable kind of uh, acquisition that the company has been undergoing. And hence, you can see uh, in terms of operating cash flow, uh, it has also been uh, significantly increased uh, by these two uh, contributing uh, acquisition. Of course, in quarter two, 2021, it is negative. But if you look deeper, because the company has actually anticipated a recovery, hence more money was spent on uh, buffing up their uh, so-called inventories and supplies so that they can continue to uh, grow their business at a much faster pace. Of course, last but not least, uh, this is a company which is showing some sort of growth momentum and growth recovery. And hence, uh, bear that in mind, if this company is probably uh, going to anticipate some sort of uh, catalyst when it comes to our uh, ever-changing spending habits, what would the valuation be like? So if you look at the latest trailing data, uh, ROE-wise, they are doing around 6.44%. Uh, in terms of PE, it is quite steep at around 71 times. And in terms of uh, dividend yield, they haven't been paying dividend uh, quite some time. So you can see that the trailing yield is actually at uh, 0%. Of course, if you look at the share price, uh, these companies have actually been a multi, uh, I would say a one bagger, close to two bagger if, if you are actually buying it, the company five years ago at around 50 cents a share. So trailing at the closing uh, current share price, it is roughly at around uh, two ringgit a share. So uh, giving you approximately 200% uh, in terms of capital gains. So I think uh, this is a company that still has a little bit of tricks up its sleeve. So uh, what is Kari Chumbing and uh, how can Kari actually play uh, into uh, their so-called next potential uh, growth uh, prospects. Yeah, I think this is a new initiative uh, announced lately. Uh, you can take a look by going into, uh, uh, I mean, search card in, in Google. It's basically allowing you to make payment basically to anywhere uh, using your credit cards. Uh, for example, uh, traditionally, traditionally, some of the uh, stuff, you can only pay using cash or using uh, debit cards or, 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 or whatnot, they are offering some sort of method uh, to allow you to make payment using credit cards. Uh, I mean, this is actually important for people that's having a cash flow issue. And then uh, you can tap on your credit limits in the credit cards to make payment. Uh, and then when your salary is in, you can actually recover it. Uh, but in my personal opinion, it's a good initiative, but uh, it really depends because the people that might find it useful is the people that uh, is having trouble in cash flow. Uh, why? It's because the transaction fee alone is not uh, cheap. Uh, basically, you are going to be charged a 2.5%. I mean, this is the current rate. They might find it later. I, I'm not sure, but it's a, it's a price you need to pay. But of course, to GHL, uh, is a way for them to make money. Right. So I think uh, part... and, yeah, yeah. So uh maybe after we share about all uh the current situation and all the current number that tied to GSL, uh some of the things that maybe you should take note is uh if you are never heard of this, basically 
uh, Malaysia and Thailand uh, government, especially the central bank, has been working together uh, to launch a cross-border QR payment. Uh, Mal- Malaysia alone already got an initiative going on. Uh, last time, you used to see a lot of QR code actually uh, shown uh, in their shop. And then you need to actually uh, take out your phone and then try to scan. Hey, which one to scan and then need to scan the right one. But uh, Malaysia Central Bank, uh, BNM, has come out uh, with the so-called national QR code called Do It Now. Uh, basically, you can use any app, any e-wallet to scan the single QR and then you route accordingly. So let's say I open using the Maybank MAE app, try to scan. So you route me to the, to the right one and do the correct deduction. So this is the current status and they wanted to push it beyond uh, the border. Meaning, uh, you once it's actually connected, Malaysia QR code, you can let Thailand to actually, uh, people to scan using the Thailand e-wallet and then make payment. And all these things is already integrated. So uh, it might be quite promising because Malaysia, Thailand, uh, I would say the, the interaction is quite frequent. When I talk about uh, tourism, uh, hopefully, when pandemic is over, this thing definitely will stimulate uh, the usage of all these QR payment. And GHL is the one that's having present not only in Malaysia, so they can tap on their so-called uh, SME network and then promote people to actually spend like this. Of course, when people spend, they make money. Some of the advantage that GHL is having uh, compared to other payment provider, which is maybe only have their footprint in Malaysia. Yeah, I'll pass to Jupan to conclude it. Then we'll share more details in uh, our upcoming thematic uh, session. Uh, looking forward to, to see you join us. Uh, it's quite easy. Just subscribe to our premium club. It will be a complimentary session for you. All right. Thanks, Jun Beng. So I think you put uh, everything as a conclusion quite uh, neatly on the table. This is a company that has presence in Southeast Asia and also uh, has that kind of tendency to help not only make payment uh, cutless and smooth, but also allow uh, so-called uh, trans-border kind of payment. So imagine that uh, from Malaysia to go to Thailand and without need to worry about changing uh, physical currency. And the same goes for a Thai uh, tourist coming to Malaysia uh, where the so-called currency issues can be settled from an app. And of course, since this company is not only just strong in the payment, seen it is also having some sort of catalyst and also advantage when it comes to so-called on, uh, online uh, shopping kind of uh, payment service provider we will take a deeper look in our upcoming not so uh, our upcoming thematic sharings on e-commerce so do join us if you are interested to know more we will talk more on the uh, supplementing uh, revenue models uh, of ghl and also the uh, com- competitors in malaysia and see that whether before we qualify uh, GHL as a potential investing candidate, whether this company can actually grow further after uh, going close to uh, 300% in a five-year span. So that's it for today. If you really enjoy and want to know more about e-commerce, do check out the thematic sharing that we will be having end of September. The links will be in the description. And if you don't, it's okay. We will definitely see you next week in our next episode of Not So Linux Show. Let us know in the comment section which company you would like us to cover and analyze. So see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.